know that other areas on Staten Island have a certain xenophobic approach to what what Stapleton and the North Shore is demographically. It's not what I mean. I, it it represents sort of like the melting pot that New York is that I fell in love with when I moved here. St. George is one of the most diverse communities in the city, which makes it one of the most diverse communities in the country, which makes it one of the most diverse places in the world. I get goosebumps going over and seeing the kids at PS16, the grammar school. It is better than the United Nations, or it's on par whenever you see the little kids do their Christmas thing. Mm -hmm. The white people are nice to some of them. Not all of them, but some of them. Not so nice when you go like to the south side and stuff like that. It's no. They say that Staten Island Expressway is like the Mason Dixon line. If they were on the other side of the highway, that would be technically North Shore. All our zip codes for our customers are always 10309, 10308, 10312, all, all south. All south shore. The expressway is the dividing line. It's like you don't go on the other side of the expressway, you stay on your own side. It's strange the way they are out here. I went there once. I never went there. We're still afraid to go down there because we think that there are a bunch of guidos and little country roads. There's nothing over there for me. Everything I need is like over here. I never go to the South Shore because there's nothing down there, except I go down to Wolf's Pond. You know, there's some nice beaches and, and, and waterfront down there. Is the mall the South Shore? That's about as far south as I get on the island. The North Shore is trying to separate itself from the rest of Staten Island and make yeah. it like its own separate entity. Some of us go over there, not a lot of us. Some of us do, but mostly the white boys that come hang out here because this is where the coach is at. And this is why I come to the North Shore, you know, it's more diverse. You know, people are more willing to accept their neighbors for whatever they do or whoever they are. I don't know too many artists from the South Shore. It really is a North Shore phenomena, the art scene. There's a lot of hate and everybody's like, you know, we're going to put everything on, in this one area and then we're going to be like, yeah, North Shore, which is great, but like, if, if we try to get the other kids out, you know, from the other areas, then, you know, why can't we all be friends, <laughs> you know? Staten Island had always seemed to me like a homogenous suburban blur, at least when I was just passing through, but now... Each pit stop exposed a new dichotomy. Generations didn't see eye to eye, mistrust between the races, native, non-native, urban, rural, with the suburb always stuck in the middle, despised by both sides. Even the North Shore, an oasis of tolerance, seemed to want to jump in the sea and swim to New York City. What really separated the North Shore from the South? They do have artists out there as well. On some level, they are sort of afraid <laughs> to come to the side of the island. We still have a reputation here. Other side of the Staten Island Express is all beautiful residential neighborhoods and beautiful commercial strips of retail, you know, offerings and strip malls and ice cream parlors and all of that good stuff. On this side of the Staten Island Express is where all of the ghettos are, all of the hoods. There's spots in Staten Island that I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk around. Definitely, absolutely. Walked around there? Have you walked around Park Hill? They're trying to redevelop some neighborhoods, and you know it might look nice, you know, putting in a light pole and things like that. But you need a whole lot more than that to change a neighborhood. The people are the same, and you put paints on the building, it's not going to just you know, fix it. Staten Island is a nice area. There's nice areas, but in every city, you always want to find a little part of the ghetto anywhere. This was my initiation to the belly of the beast the dark secret that lay hidden from me for years behind the suburban blur. Five interactive projects, as far as the Northern Shore is con concerned, it's like five major areas, Park Hill, Stapleton, West Brighton, New Brighton, the Harbor. Uh, you go into any of these areas, any, any neighborhood where there is a project, and you step into a piece of urban New York City, you know, right here, where people still think it's, you know, so green and so nice and so open. Had to change, change a lot of that community to make more room for people because the, there was more people than there was land. Like my neighborhood I liked growing up, it was safe. It was the old type Victorian people. People sat on their front yards on your front porch, you had tea, you said hello to everybody. And nobody hid in their backyards on decks and you didn't meet your neighbors. Everybody was nice and friendly. The doors were never locked. 
And when the project's up, within like a month or two, all the sleds and your bicycles were gone off your porch, and we found them all down on projects. It was just a different type of people all together that whole day. I can't do this in my neighborhood. It's the projects. We five dudes over there, six dudes over there, little kids running around throwing rocks at cars, and you don't get a peaceful state of mind. Like even if you're in your house, being that it's people in the back of your building screaming, you hearing gunshots, damn near every night. I could be in my neighborhood walking down the block, and these like couple kids over here got beef with another neighborhood, and I'm walking by and they just start shooting, and I could get hit, and that ain't got nothing to do with me. Like, I want to live on Staten Island for the rest of my life, to be honest. But it's like, I'd rather live on the other side of the island. It's scary. It's scary. It's not safe anymore. That's not an area to raise children or even be in as a young woman. You didn't get any of that when you were growing up? Uh, don't go to Stapleton, don't go to St. George. <laughs> what did you see? That was uh, eye-opening. See, I ain't lived there these five since some years now, but this used to be all brick, and you couldn't see in the elevator. But since so much has happened, violence-wise, they've opened it. If they don't fuck with Stevenson. Stevenson's considered cop killer project. This is the kill police. Like they don't, they don't play no games. They probably ain't gonna give us no love. They ain't gonna kill us no love. Yeah, they, All these cops around here full of shit. They crook more crooked than the people that is crooked. Drug haven. They do it out in the open. Take a win for the police. But really, you don't shit for you eat. It's their living here. Unfortunately, the clientele is different now. You don't care. There's no pride. 27 is the building, Warren is the street. So 27 Ward. And we're the 27 waters. There's no, uh, pride is the strongest word I can think of. Funny. I witnessed more home pride here than anywhere else. I said, fuck the messenger. Pay attention to the message about this depression at the depression of the Department of Correction. I'm a felon in a crooked institution, so I'm considered a slave according to the Constitution 13th Amendment. Officers try to discover your loved ones when you come and visit, and phone calls be ridiculous. $3.99 for the first and 19 cents each additional minute. Behind these cold walls, them de evils be killing people. Taxpayer, this is what your paper go, huh? Oh, I thought that was, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Talking all that shit earlier. Like, yeah, well, I'll the just the tell wall. them, well, I'll just <laughs> tell them. They Run do. my shit. Here's my ID. Get on that up north shit. It's not OD crazy like what you see on TV. Bang, bang, all. There's a whole bunch of gang bangers. Basically, people just have nothing to do. Chilling outside, probably selling drugs, trying to talk to girls like any other boy's gonna do. Nigga, I'm one of the best. No contest. The con big desk, well dressed. Press me, I press that 9 M, M in your chest. People have been watching violent movies. There's such violence, and people get stomped and killed you know, for no reason, and, and the kids do it. Talking radiator, gladiator, hoes, do clothes, and there she blows, her flows like Agua Boy. And if I run out of dough, I might rob your boy, I'm not your boy. You pick up the uh, Staten Island Advance, the local paper, and you look at the crime blotter, and uh, a lot of your gunshots and, uh, you know, gun crimes and drug crimes are happening right, you know, in a, in a couple of concentrated areas. It's a misconception. Like my man Andre 3000 has a lyric, is every nigga with gold for the fall, is every nigga with dreads for the cause. Nah, so don't get caught up in appearance. My daughter's got me this for Father's Day. I'm rocking it, I'm representing it every day. Love you, Wisdom, love you, Isis. More crimes happen in the 122, which is the 122nd precinct, Mid-Island than it does in the hood. Like black kids, they go to school, they behave themselves. They don't even make the newspaper. One black kid gets in trouble, and he's six pages on the six o'clock news. It's more reported on the North Shore, because people expect it. It's the reason why the 122 and the 123 precincts, you can go to them bullpens and them shits are probably empty, or they probably got a couple of drunks in there. You know what I'm saying? But you come to the 120 when there's four motherfuckers in every cell. It's a matter of design. Yep. See, if you look at that light blinking over there, that's a tower. We can walk down there, they got a tower that they rise up to fucking watch over the whole neighborhood. We on camera 24 hours. We on camera, why y'all putting us on camera? 
it's a mobile police station pretty much. They sit up in there, it's a bunch of computers in there, and they zoom in, probably microphones, and can hear probably us right here right now. We're on a real life reality show every day. And police is our audience. You know, years ago I woke up in the morning, I watched my cartoons, you know, I go to school, mm -hmm. I watch my cartoons. Mm -hmm. These days there's reality shows on this, reality shows on that. MySpace and computers and websites about pedophiles and child uh, abusers in the area that they're, they're all over and they tell you the exact address where they live so um, I mean it's ter it's kind of like bad in a sense because you don't want to like judge this person maybe they but I, also you want to know who's around the corner you can really spend I'm sure your whole life sitting in front of a TV screen or a, a computer screen and that's not my idea of uh, what I want to do. Her brother's own recording studio, it's like soundproof and like it's all black and we put like the Dark Knight posters and like all these movie posters up and we just play video games on like an air mattress and it's the back okay. so Everyone has so much technology in their house that it's more interesting to be in front of the TV with 500 channels or in front of the like a nice computer with internet. There's like more going on there than there is outside your house. How many kids do you see around? What time is it now? Dad, he was in like that I've got a 20-year-old who could sit for six hours without taking his hands off the controls, and I don't blame anybody but me, because people don't force them off the couch and go out and play basketball and baseball. We have wonderful natural resources here, but kids don't even know what the parks are or where they are. Always said I never wanted to end up like those 30-year-old lazy American kids. He can't go yes, off the block without his mother looking out the window to see where he is. And I grew up when I went out, nobody knew where I was. You know, growing up, you make mistakes, so I, uh, I keep a tight leash. People are like too preoccupied being afraid of pedophiles and kids eating razor blades and apples to let them go outside and have a good time and like befriend people. This era has really taken a lot of the interpersonal relationships people have with one another because instead of speaking to one another, they can text them. Well, I was in Great Hills for about six months and nobody came outside. Like, I'd rather grow up in a part where it wasn't the best influence outside, but at least I had somebody there to talk to other my parents and my cat. And I'm the only child, so I was bored in my mind. I was going crazy, I could not, I can't do it. If I was to go to a suburb, I have to go, I have to meet the neighbors first and find out what they like. Cause I don't like isolated areas at all. I guess cause I'm a city kid, like that's how I grew up. I hate isolated areas. I was starting to suspect the safety of the suburbs. Was it any surprise kids resorted to TV and video games when they'd been denied any risk in the real world? Say if I'm right here and I see a bunch of people down there Music blasting, being that this is what we're accustomed to, we're going to want to go downstairs and see what's going on. Rather than in more suburban neighborhoods, you hear noise and automatically something wrong. I'm from the Bronx, so I'm, I'm from where anything can happen. Not that anything can't happen here, but you know who's going to do anything. You kind of know who a libel to flip out. Because you know it's crime everywhere, but it's like out here. It's like, it's just this one street in the middle. So you, everybody knows everything that's going on because either you're talking or people saying something, you heard about it or you're there yourself. You know that expression when you have a nosy neighbor and they have to know everything that's going on, but I'm very fortunate that the people who I'm surrounded by are pretty much in the same situation as I am. You know, people work full time, they have their own lives, so you respect a certain amount of privacy. Yesterday I, I had a, a, a party for my four-year-old and it was just great you know we have our own house and you don't have to worry about anybody on top of you there was a time we had block parties where they'd put out a couple of big grills and they'd get a cask of beer and a cask of orange stuff for the kids and everybody would come and eat kind of communally now that if they have block parties it's everybody has their own little block party with their friends and family and there's not too much mingling we happen to have one of the nicest grounds, probably the largest and the least dense population of any swim club. And yet, for some reason, we're just not doing as well as we should be. I don't know why. Years ago, people used to stay in the place closed. 
Uh, they would have supper here. The men and working women would come after work and stay here until it was dark. People in this day and age became very lazy. They didn't need like a quick fix to everything. So it's like, do I lay out six hours by the pool or do I jump into bed for 10 minutes and get the same color? You know? And like if they're busy and they're running errands all day and they don't have time, they just jump in the tanning bed. We used to be open till midnight and people call me at like 10 to 12 like, are you still there? I'm on my way. I'm like, relax, all right? Like if you tan tomorrow morning, you'll live. The people that come here actually like want to socialize and lounge and like enjoy nature, which I feel like people take for granted. There are people who have left because they, they decided to put a pool in their own backyard. And then on the other hand, you have people that have pools in their backyard that decide, we don't want that. We don't want the responsibility. We want our kids to socialize and be part of a, part of a group. That now is more family. I remember when I came here, I'm, wow, this is a place where it's family. They like to do things with their family, whether it's go to the movies with your family or eat with your family or go to the park with your family. Family values was starting to sound like a loaded term. They always seemed to come at the expense of community. It's nice to have people that you know that are close with, that you could talk to. You know, I don't get involved in the community, but. In the paint was a huge shortage of the living space. Yes. So the people stay together no matter what because there was no place to go. You like to have more privacy, you know, when you go outside, you, you know, you don't. I feel like I have to always say hi to somebody. On the other side, nobody can shut off their own life completely. There's some people I haven't even met yet. I've been on around five years because of the cost of boxes or because they work during the day. People want to stay in America, like they keep to themselves more. They don't want to interfere. They want to abuse somebody's privacy. I live in a neighborhood where you don't see my neighbors all year round. You probably see them in the summer once or twice. Nobody has that type of time. You know? Everybody's like, hi, and goodbye, because everybody has to go, go, go. People are working. They're out. They're doing. Unless there's some major issue, they don't want to know about it. That reminded me. Wasn't there a pretty huge issue I wasn't hearing much about? Uh, at one point, we had the largest uh, garbage um, <laughs> this, well, you know what I'm referring oh, yeah. to. Years ago, they had the, um, oh, I can't think of it. I think a lot of people think now that the dump is closed, everything's okay. It's filled with trees, which it's so much better. People have no idea what went on in that place for so long. They exceeded their federal regulations for pollution within the first week of the year. Every year it was open. Benon has double the national average of cancer rates. I have aunts and uncles that lived in the Travis area, very close to the landfill. Travis has the highest rate of cancers on Staten Island. I had a friend that worked with my dad that worked in the landfill, as my dad did too at one time. And he had uh, high levels of lead in his blood. I know what's going on. It's just I live in a nice neighborhood. We both work. We, we have our friends. We, we go to the movies. We don't get involved in any of the things that we were just talking about. I started kind of like hating Staten Islanders because I felt like uh, maybe they got accustomed to the smell of garbage. I came home, I went to sleep. I went to work and I didn't, you know, pay attention to what was happening in my own community. When I rode by the landfill, I kept my windows closed. Staten Island is accessible to the city, which makes it uh, attractive for most people who work in the city and in Brooklyn to live on Staten Island. Americans say you don't work where you live. You live where you work. Uh, for convenience, people will stay. But I don't think people are wanting to stay in Staten Island anymore. If my son, after graduation, will move out, it's possible that uh, we will move somewhere else. When you become unnested, it's time to move on. We usually read about the moving to Jersey. The only reason you know that is because you read the obituary column. Someone so moved to Jersey, they used to live on Staten Island. That's usually how you find those things out. I myself am going to New Jersey. There's a very nice community there. A lot of our friends are there. Things are on one level. I'm going to have an indoor and an outdoor pool, my wife and I. But I would never want to see this place fold and become condos or condominiums or townhouses or whatever. I started to realize the dump was a non-issue if so many of the affected found it easier to just move on. Jersey's wide open. There is a quality of life there I'd like to, uh, I'd like to discover. 
I'm a completely different person in New Jersey. The atmosphere is so much more calm, so much more laid back. That side of the ocean is much cleaner than our side. The Jersey Shore is 50 miles away and it's the same water because it's the ocean. I wouldn't want to swim in these uh, waters out here. I go swimming in the water. No. This water? This is no. like polluted. There's like dead bodies in that water. <laughs> Jersey, it just to me, just different. I don't know why, but. Every immigrant group in New York City's history moves west eventually. There's a rich American Indian history on Staten Island. You really have to look for it. But there's a story there. I'm basically a Brooklyn girl that came up to Staten Island. Mixed up was uh, Jersey, and then after that, Pennsylvania. That seems to be the way. Have you seen Jersey lately? It's so Staten Island nowadays. The people in New Jersey will scratch their heads and they'll say, my God, this place is turning into Brooklyn. Uh, Staten Island wants to be Brooklyn, it wants to be this, it wants to be that, you know, but it isn't. I'm definitely a Manhattanite. I've been there, I've hung out there, it's, the people are more diverse. It's not the same bullshit you get here. It's just nicer. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, I don't know, I just dig it. It's just one of those things better clubs and you've got a better mix of people. How would it, what's the best way to put it where I'm not knocking anybody? No, I'm not a clan person and I'm glad I work in Manhattan to get, get away from it. And when I didn't work in Manhattan, I used to have to run to Manhattan just like as an, as an outlet. Being on a crowded train forces you to be pressed up against someone, you know, who comes from halfway around the world. There's nothing like that in Staten Island. The trains never get so full that you're pressed up against a total stranger. And there's something beautiful about a metropolis. The island is so small, like everybody knows everybody. everybody knows like, everybody's everybody. Everybody's connected in a different way. Everybody knows everybody. I could go to a lounge that I've never even heard of before, and I'll see like 10 or 15 people in there that I know. It's first it's exciting, and then you're like, oh crap. You, you can't like, have any secrets on Staten Island. Enemies is your friends, friends is your enemies, all that good stuff. You don't know who's who yet until it's too late. I can make a list of who's going to be at the next party right now before the party even happens. Like the people that like to go out and enjoy themselves, they like, I don't do Staten Island parties because they know what's coming. If you open a club out here, especially on this side of town, and sad to say, enough black people show up, something's popping up. It's going down. White boys would thump it out. We be clapping it out. Every time I would go to a show, there would always be like a fight over some stupid bullshit. I'm not down with that. I just wanted to go and listen to music and not spend $7 to get into a place and then get kicked out for two people fighting over, you know, who's more hardcore. You can't really have a major scene over here because everybody shows up. I'm, I'm just a hard head. You know what I mean? I've, I've got cut in the Staten Island party, 350 stitches, and I still go. Two people, just two people who don't like each other, fuck up the whole night for everybody. You hear that? People who shoot each other in these ghettos know each other. It's not strange. You don't get shot by a stranger. You get shot by somebody you went to fifth grade with. It's but the same thing that makes it not safe. Is that it's small. Everybody knows everybody. So that's what keeps you safe. You know, you know all the people around you. So you have resources. I could walk down this whole street and any other hood or any other project I want. And I, I'm either going to know someone or just not have a problem. Like other places are serious. Like you, I can't wear black in certain places. You know, I can't wear red. That's what I love about my hood. Like, you know what I mean? Even when it's fucked up, it's not that fucked up. Especially when it comes to rap. Like, this, like that kid Rhino you met and Shaim, like, they're all, they're not all from the same area. They're all from, like, all the rappers are from different areas. As a matter of fact, I used to play touch football with Shaheem when he was, like, four feet tall. You know what I mean? He was Shaheem the rugged child at the time. What the intimacy of Staten Island lends itself to is the fact that everybody knows each other and it breeds competition. A lot of people are nice. Like I know, I'll give you an example, my man Castro, him and his brother are both nice. Like two brothers are both beasts. Me, I compete with Castro. Listen, show. check it. Our government really has scaly skin. Uh. You ain't know we controlled by some aliens. aliens. Mm. Every year, 51 scientific studies. Uh. x file case called Molder Rent Scully. Uh. They keep us blind with music and lottery. Uh. They feed the aliens, they give us technology. Uh. Why you think these little kids now found missing? Listen. They keep them locked up in the underground Ground prison. prison. Uh. 